Today, my guest is none other than perhaps the most famous Bajan personality on radio at the moment, Market Vendor. So, Market Vendor, welcome to Capital Media. Do you want to be called Market or Market Vendor? I notice sometimes that people refer to you as Market and other people refer to you as Market Vendor. Does it, does it really matter? Yes, it's good to be here. I like to get in a place with all these nice couches and things. Notice they ain't got no, they ain't got no tears down. Nothing, boy. Let me tell you, this must be new furniture when I go in here. <laughs> I get to sit down. Nothing like this here recently. <laughs> I was here abusing me, you could call me anything. You could call me market, you could call me market vendor, you could call me anything. It really don't matter to me as long as you don't call me, no, you know, the bad words. You know where I'm coming from? <laughs> don't call me a brass bull, not that and so I respond in kind. <laughs> and first and foremost, tell us a little bit about like, your lineage. Are you Barbadian? Uh, where were you born? Um, tell us a little bit about market vendor. By means of my lineage, you mean, you mean my family? Oh, yeah, well, I had a mother and a father, yes, yeah, that's my lineage. <laughs> we got a little piece of everything. Look, let me tell you something. I got claims to Guyana. I got claims to Trinidad and Tobago. I got claims to Barbados. I got apparently claims to Ireland, claims to Scotland, and one or two other places, too, as well. I asked about the family lineage, travel wide and far, all through Africa, and apparently parts of the Middle East, too, as well. They didn't even know about that there, so and a lot of Europe too as well. So you see me lineage is all there, but at the end of the day, oh, he's a Barbadian just like you. Where, where exactly did the idea, the name, the concept for Market Vendor come from? Could you share, share that with us? Well, the idea for Market Vendor really come out the market. I mean, it can come from the West, it can come from Parliament. <laughs> I was in the market, and I noticed that a certain person up there in that market in ice things, Used to rinse me, a lot of rinses. My friends from Guyana would say she mout upon everybody. And I just thought, well, you know, I could really do the same thing too as well. Kind of frightened to express my opinion. So it come from in the market. Plain and simple, that's where I come from. Guy people in the market want it, but people in the market, you will notice, you know, of it. One thing you will notice about them there so is that they don't mince words, you know. Them don't rice at nobody. They tell straight, let's say I just rice at myself. They might not got a big sale of money, but let me tell people in the market that is tell it to you straight. They don't dress it up at all at all. If a friend will tell you you look like a breadfruit swapper, believe you me, you look like a breadfruit swapper. <laughs> market vendor, do you suffer fools gladly? I get the impression sometimes that you would like to say something a little bit more, well, shall we say, robust when you are talking to some people on air than perhaps you are allowed to, uh, given the, the realities and the legal obligations and so on. I don't suffer fools at all. I don't really don't take on fools. Because when people start foolishness, I market vendor will just unzip my tongue and I will continue and I would mind my own business. Because when people talk, you should not try to reason with a fool. Because everybody is entitled to their opinion. Even fools are entitled to their opinion. I know some mad people that talk real sense. And I know some sane people that just talk bear doo doo, bear horse manure. So I market vendor don't really get into talk with fools. If somebody talk in foolishness, I let them go along because they're entitled to, they to bring it to me. I understand? I will respond and I will tell them exactly how I feel about what they're saying. I don't mean to offend the body, but if you're talking nonsense, I don't believe I should let you believe that what you're saying is, you know, something, something like what well, the prime minister or somebody would say that got profound implications and I did nodding at you when I done think you're a blasted idiot. No, we don't shut up, don't go along about your business. <laughs> Stop wasting market time. <laughs> market vendor, you seem to find humor sometimes in offbeat things. How how do you go about finding your humor? Where do you where do you find the things to, to comment on humorously? Oh lost. Well that one is an easy one. Because you already gotta watch out people. You understand? Because people just talk enough shite, you know, sometimes. You got you gotta admit that, you understand? Bear shite, let's talk sometimes. So a lot when people talk in foolishness, you know what you got to do. You listen to them, you say, uh-huh, yeah. Like for example, you hear people talking, I hear politicians sometimes talking about negative growth. I just get my humor from them. Because when you're talking shy, you're talking shy. You understand where market coming from? <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about politics now. Um, are you a member of a political party? Are you a B? Are you a D? People want to know, you know, people think that you maybe they know what particular party you support. I, I like Busy Williams. He say he is the PIG party. P 
PIG, the big, I, you know, the party and government. <laughs> Listen, I support whoever doing right by Barbados. If you're doing foolishness by Barbados, I reserve the right to tell you that you may not want to hear it and you might put your yard folds to curse market vendor. But you see me, I would prefer to support rather than to be a member of. Listen, if Mr. Short, for example, had asked me to come and help you out, I would have come and help you out to help out Chris, but you didn't ask me nothing. You understand? But if you would asked me, I would have given you a little help. <laughs> I noticed that you get some flack sometimes from people that may run afoul of the comments that you make. For example, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, while the majority of people in Trinidad and Tobago seem to have supported you, in your comments on the Trinbegonians who were stranded in Barbados, not everyone quite agreed. And more recently, I noticed you've been subjected to a lot of verbal abuse, but I noticed your comments in response to the people in Guyana who were abusing you and responding to you and telling you to stay out of Guyana's business and that sort of stuff. I noticed that you took a very humorous approach to those matters. Could you care to comment on that? Yeah, hold on there a minute. This young lady here gave him a little coffee, the breakfast here. This water coffee looks very watery though. Let me taste it. I mean, it tastes too bad though. She must have put too much milk in it though. But anyhow, yes, hold on. I'm going to take a little sip here if you don't mind. You got me talking so much, man. Let me tell you. But they ain't even offer me two Shirley biscuits. Well, no. Now, as to the matter about the stranded Trinidadians and the Guyana elections. Well, let me start with the Trinidadians first of all. Now, I am not an attorney at law, but if I am a citizen born and bred in Trinidad and Tobago, or Trinidad or Tobago, I don't see how the Minister of National Security could tell me that I can, cannot come back inside the country. Well, where are you supposed to go? I land up, these 22 people land up in Barbados, uh, and the people stranded here in Barbados, they begging you to pay for the flight for them to come home. Them they're willing to pay, they have an inalienable right because the constitution guarantees. If, well, if you don't take them, who can take them? They might be able you people. Huh? And eventually you still have to take them in and then you put the people in, you quarantine them again. It's what the traditions call a lot of papi show. That's all I was, mere papi show. You was a gorilla foot. You got uh, some stripes on your shoulders. So you know you could play you who you bigger, you powerful. But them fellas don't realize that when you lose election, you just come back to be a just like market vendor. Huh? Why well, see a fellow the other day who was big and powerful in politics in Barbados just over two years ago? I oh, see he sitting down by the bench in the market. I thought he did a hawker. Uh, <laughs> the next one now that you asked me about is the Guyana elections. Oh, lost. Well, apparently I rile up the people in Guyana. And I realized that it is yard fouls that are riling up. Because the yard fouls was clucking and clucking and crowing and, you know, morning, noon, and night. My, the cursed market vendor left, right, and center. The one sent me to the dentist. They tell me how a skull. They call me all kinds of names, all kinds of things. Basically, the market vendor, I realized that they have an intellectual problem, that they have a little shortage of learning. You understand? I realize that Guyana, the, 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 the people in charge of this election machinery, were having a little problem. They obviously missed a certain number of school exams because they did not know how to count. Because if they didn't know how to count, they would not have been counting from the 2nd of March up until now trying to work out who win the elections. One is only fairly straightforward. But the majority of Guyanese people are fair-minded. They are sensible, you understand? And I like Guyana real, real bad. So I ain't really taking on the people who are the yard fouls, you know? Yes. Well, Market Band, I want to thank you for taking time out uh, for uh, this interview and, and, and sharing with us some of your thoughts and let us get a little insight more into who Market Vendor is. Thank you very much for being a part of today's interview. Well, I want to thank you for coming down here, so to bring me down here all the way down by the West Coast and bring me here, so in this place here, the Lifestyle, what we call it, Lime Grove Lifestyle Center. Oh, last, it's real nice, though. I hope I could, I would like to stand up here by this couch a little bit more. And as it getting close to lunchtime, I hope that maybe, you know, I ain't smell nothing yet, but I hope they will bring up something from West Bar. Here they got something down there called Street Noodles. That real, 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 gotta hear friends of my raving about that there, so. So if you could get a little street noodles for market, you know, I won't mind some street noodles. So I'm glad enough for the opportunity to come down here so I'll see what down here really look like by the matter. I wish the market could look like this. When I got the rats about here, and I see nothing running around here. 
I ain't even see a little bit around here, so I want to see clear all them things. Yes. Anyhow, thank you for inviting Market. And you know, listen out, because you know, I hear when I got me no power, Instagram, and when I got my about Facebook. What I mean, what I mean, when I got my Facebook, but a book or something, so, you know, anyhow, Facebook and Instagram and what, Twitter, and, 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 and then you got my also up and uh, YouTube and all them things. Yes, well, it's, uh, that's a sweet thing, though, now, all this technology that when I got. Yes, I want to find some time to do some work, though, sometimes in between. Anyhow, I mark it when they go for now. You have a blessing and a wonderful day. Yeah? Market Vendor for Capital Media HD 99.3. I'm Vic Fernandes.